Well, the four litres in the garden on jack stands and I've been bashing away on it, the Jeep, obviously. And I just haven't really had time to get it finished, really, to make a video for this Sunday. So it's just the reality of the way it goes. But it's going pretty well and I'm actually having a lot of fun now. I'm getting stuck into it. But you can kind of see behind me the diesel is, is kind of near completion. The roof tent has been removed, which has shaved off around about 80 kilos off of the roof. If you include the tent, the load bars that come with it and the solar panels that you can see the other side, it's quite surprising in the way it feels when you drive it but all that aside my shaft is too long and I need to shorten it never thought I'd say that one thing I have managed to do since the last video is take some parts from this mp231 and put it into mine and I've actually kind of repaired it but this is the shaft in question the front shaft it's basically just a little bit too long when it's installed this slip yoke is back to about there where you see my finger kind of end and that is just a little bit on the long side because when that backs up I think what's actually happened is it's backed up into the bearing on the other side here and actually kind of prematurely worn it out. So this is going to be a bit of a DIY job. I'm going to grind away the welds that basically hold the spline ends to the shaft and then I'm going to shorten it and I'm going to get it on the vehicle. I'm going to use the vehicle and straighten it. So I've got to the point now where I've cut through the weld and I've actually taken the cut off wheel and I've just rotated the shaft pretty slowly until I've broken through and, and whacked it with the hammer a little bit. You can see it's starting to break apart. And one thing I haven't mentioned that I did first was marked the shaft so it goes back together the way it came apart. It's kind of important really and I can't remember the technical term for it. But basically it's something to do with the orientation of the shaft, the U-joints and stuff. So. You know, as I said, I can't remember the technical term for it, but if you're going to do this, then obviously I'd recommend you do that. But a more important question would be like, why would you even bother with this? The reason I did it on the rear of the vehicle is because I've got a diesel. So the rear drive shaft on the diesel is somewhere around about 44 inches fully extended. It's like a proper horse dong of a drive shaft. So, you know, it had to be really long and I, and I just couldn't find anything affordable in Europe or, and to get it made for me in the States cost too much so I just took the chance and made one myself. I've got another shaft here that is basically the same one that I'm chopping into and you can't really get quality parts in Europe anymore for Jeeps you know there's a lot of things about these shafts that are just shite and uh, I've not had really a lot of luck but the problem is is they want $250 equivalent for this thing here and this is made in China and it's it's just the quality shit. This one here, I've put Spicer U-joints in and I've replaced the double cardan end with Spicer. Like I'd love to be able to get a proper Adams drive shaft from the US and stuff, but you know, it's just, it's just too much money right now. So this is the avenue I'm taking, but let's split this sucker apart. should be pretty easy to work with. Um, there is something in the shaft though, I don't know. Some rattling around it. Oh, I knew it. It's been eating on the job. Here we go. So I need to measure this out. And the way I'm gonna do it is just kind of, I'm trying to sort of measure the mid length that I want the shaft to be. So not full bone and not a flopper around the semi-section, which... So how we impress them, right? That's how we impress them. Um, so I'm gonna measure like this. And just figure out where I want it to be. So This is such accuracy that's happening right now. So yeah, like 83. That'll do, innit? <laughs> I haven't actually taken that much away, but that's going to be enough to stop the shaft backing up, basically bottoming out. Um, you know, and, and, and 
sort of ruining the MPT31. So I'm going to tap these two pieces together now and just align them up. And then it's going to go back on the vehicle and then I've got to make sure it's straight with the dial gauge. I'm just going to rotate the end now so that it's uh, basically all good. So the shaft's all bolted up. Now it's not like sphincter tight, but it's tight. And I've jacked up the front axle so I can rotate the tire, spin the shaft and use the dial gauge to kind of check how straight it is. So I've got the cameras in as most convenient position as possible. I'm just rotating this. Um, there is gonna be some deviation because like, I haven't cleaned the surface properly. So there's paint and other such sort of surface grubbage that's gonna gonna make it do stuff like that where it's flickering a bit as it goes over some paint but the general idea it's going up now um, as it stops there I shall hammer from the top but it has to be to about four thousandths I think So you can see that I managed to get that high spot there. And basically it's looking pretty decent really. That that's that's looking good. That flickering is where it goes over the shitty paint, like like there. A few rough spots on the old shaft, you know, it's seen some action, so it looks okay. But then the thing is now is now that now I will weld it, I'll put a spot weld in. I'll have to do all this again because the weld will pull it. So with that welded up, I am looking at about 10 thousandths. That's, to be honest, I don't think that's gonna be good enough, but you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to really know without proper machinery and everything else. So I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna take it off, tidy it up, weld it better where the areas went a bit weird. Maybe take some of those welds down a bit and run it and see what it's like. Well, there it is all shiny and new not quite uh look white is the only color i actually had so it's going to be white it's man mayo white so it's it's a pretty good color i mean it's it's strong it's a strong color right um and in the snow when it comes off i won't be able to find it and thus for out of sight out of mind do you know what i mean it's not a problem anymore but it's not balanced, so it's probably uh, gonna vibrate terribly. I mean, who knows, but the rear shaft didn't. The tires aren't balanced and they're just mud terrain, so who knows if they're vibrating or not anyway. So really what I'm trying to say is I like vibrations and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's impressive, it's, it's impressive. It, I guess I'm. I guess I'm not that young anymore. You know, so like, Scott, you got, got to embrace it. Got to embrace it. So, uh, just an observation that some of you may have noticed is yes, I did paint the mating surfaces and the U-joint caps. I have scraped that away, as you should do, or just maybe, maybe mask them off, unlike. What I did. There we go, all buttoned up. So the shaft is all installed and it's looking pretty McDonald's under here. I like it. Um, but just thought I'd give it one last check. It really should be as close to the end as possible, I think, given that would be where most of the variation would be, but you know, it's too dirty. So I think it is around about 10 thousandths. Um, there are a few manky paint spots here and there. 
Uh, but we'll see how that plays out. So I'm just going to take it for a spin. Got a couple of cameras underneath the vehicle, one on the rear drive shaft as well. So I'm doing about 100 kilometers an hour, which is around about 60 miles per hour. Um, I can't feel any vibrations. I can't actually hear anything, um, which is quite surprising really, because originally I could hear like a wow, 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 wow sound on the old drive shaft, but in all fairness, the, the yoke was practically hanging off. So since it's been rebuilt, it's clearly a little bit healthier than it was before. Just gone onto a little trail now, and I'm gonna put it into four wheel drive and just see how it feels, see if it makes any noise. it's making is actually the transfer case and it sounds like chain slap I knew this other chain I put in had a, had a bit of slack on it so uh, you know like I said I still need a rebuild kit but the drive shaft itself is feeling tight real tight like This setup's always been limited by the shock travel, which is actually what's limiting the flex. It would actually have more to give, um, but uh, I think that's probably enough anyway. I um, actually put these little cable ties in to try and keep the brake lines um, sort of good whilst it flexed out. But you can see that slip yoke's not really moved that much actually. Just, just a small amount, but it's all looking pretty good. And then there's the bushing that I... Um, sort of replaced and, and got that arm sorted so man there's so little movement in that heim at the back there's really absolutely none this thing's got quite a lot more to give if i got those shocks or dialed in properly um but i got the bump stops pretty much sorted that's all squashed up in there looking at the sway bar it's gone up and it looks like it's sort of met that bit there which um, which is interesting, like maybe I could take that out, but I don't really actually need any more upward travel. And it looks like the bump stop has basically maxed out, although the engagement's not perfect, but that's really just down to the uh, coil buckets and all this other kind of shite and the way it sort of works together. But uh, yeah, on the back, it's pretty much bump stopped to the max. So, Axle should be, yeah, it is. Yeah, you can sort of see it in the back there. That tire's lifting off the ground. Could actually uh, probably send the vehicle, uh, could probably send the vehicle over if I wanted to. It's on the tipping, it's not on the tipping point, but it's getting there. And up here's looking all right, so sort of nice, set up pretty good. That's a decent amount of flex, really. I didn't actually have a look at uh, this. Yeah, so that's nice. His home's got plenty of movement and the arm has too. So, looks like a job well done. Nice. Well, that's it from me in this episode. Hopefully that's mission accomplished. That drive shaft seemed to be behaving itself and it didn't really feel like it was vibrating, even real high speed and stuff. I mean, Rotating the seas on the axle, good pinion, good caster and other geometry are going to help that. But the, the reality is, is that shaft still isn't balanced and neither is the rear one. And 
will there be some long-term issues with that well i mean probably you know because it's gonna theoretically anyway from my limited knowledge put excess strain on bearings and other sorts of things like that but the mp231 still needs a rebuild it's still sounding like someone chattering its teeth up at like you know when you do four-wheel drive and, and when you drive along in the winter on the ice roads i kind of want to be in four-wheel drive all the time um but yeah i'm, I'm soon to put an e-locker in this it's at home in the workshop i just have to uh find the time to do it but i want to put some time into the four litre at the moment at least get that in a position where it's not like requiring loads of like body work for the winter um, because when the snow falls things tend to slow down a bit but if it's ready to be welded i can drive it into the garage and do the weld work on it and get it running and then it's sort of like in a much better state really to sort of start playing about with and having some fun with so um you know there's some interesting stuff to come up but I've got to do a bed platform in that and I've got a very cool idea of how to do it. I've not actually seen anyone else do this and that's making me get a semi. It's making me feel a bit... It's making me feel, you know, making me feel sort of powerful um, again, right? I don't know. Um, it could be a total failure, but if it isn't, it will mean that I don't need to actually have an extra platform and the rear seat as it folds down will disconnect and click upward like that and form the platform itself and it'll all be there ready to roll without me putting anything extra in so i can still use it as a family wagon or just a solo wagon too and it sort of fits the bill as it always has been for me which is like a multi-functional jack of all trades master of none kind of adventure vehicle so um you know that's pretty cool but um yeah, I don't really know what else to update you with. I mean, I know pretty much like, most people watching this probably don't really give a shit. I mean, there's some of you out there who probably do because you're doing, you're doing your own builds and it's cool to sort of see what other people do. I mean, I look at a lot of other people's stuff too and get inspiration from it, then claim it as my own on this channel. It's just, it's just how we do it, right? Um, but I'm actually going to look at a roof box, um, like one of the ones you see for skiing. But it's a really old style one and it's only about 28 centimeters high but it's 120 wide and two meters long so it would be the entire roof of that and it would sit on those load bars there and i probably would lower those load bars back down a bit like it was with the roof tent and then you've got a waterproof box on the roof so instead of a roof rack you've only got something up there that probably weighs around 20 kilos including the box let's say 25 with those bars and then you can put all the bulky stuff like bedding and everything up there when you do family trips but you know and it's and it's waterproof hopefully it's waterproof you know you just got to make sure it is i think and replace the gaskets on it but that's kind of the direction i'm thinking of going in um and if it looks good i'll run with it all year round uh, but if it doesn't look good it'll just be something that i bolt on there with some clips for family camping because when i'm rolling solo this is all i need don't need anything else i mean i travel pretty light and i won't be using the rooftop tent again so um you know this is the way i'm going to be going forward so whether i get a roof rack or not i really don't know um there are some really good ones around but you know you pay for them don't you you're paying like anywhere between 800 to sort of 1500 euros for an aluminium rack that you could probably build yourself pretty easily so you know, I'm, I, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But if you've got any ideas out there, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Um, but a friend of mine on Instagram who I chat to, um, Obi, I think his name's Obi One, and he's got a, a Wrangler. He suggested that the solar panels actually are underneath the roof box and they slot out on runners like that. So when you get to camp, solar panels click out. You know, roof box opens, bedding comes out. You know, and then it's sort of. You're still keeping that versatility. I really like that idea, so I appreciate that, mate. I'm going to steal that and claim it as my own as well. And probably report your account, to be honest, mate. Just so, just tying up loose ends. Do you know, what I mean? it's nothing personal. It's just, you know, it's how, it's how we do it. It's how we do it on YouTube, basically. You know, if you see someone do something, you do it try and get a better video with more views and bury their video and then report it as a copyright claim they didn't have permission to use your idea that you saw them use first all right anyway enough shit chat by me 
see you very soon in another one. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.